Hey, welcome back to The Source. You know, one of the subjects that gets the biggest response from viewers is when we look at the environmental extremists in this country. And a friend of ours, a friend of mine, and a friend of this channel is Vivian Krause. She's a true environmentalist who actually cares about making the world a safer, cleaner place. And that's why she has a beef and is begun to poke around at some of the professional environmentalists out there. Vivian Krause joins me now from Vancouver. Hey, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Ezra. Well, it's great to see you as always. And as I mentioned in my introduction there, you truly care about making the air, the water, the soil cleaner. I, I want you to tell me about some of your experiences when you have a run-in with some of the more professional, let's say it, multi-millionaire uh, you know, environmental activists. Let's start with David Suzuki. During the commercial break, you were telling me about a particular run-in you had with the great saint. Tell me about the great saint. Uh, tell me how that went down. Well, what, what brings it to mind, of course, is the article in, in the Financial Post recently about how David Suzuki has insulted other sciences, scientists who don't agree with him but will not debate with him. And I've sort of had that same experience, I guess. Over the last four years, I've written a series of letters to Dr. Suzuki to try and bring to his attention that some of the information that he's been providing to the media and to the public is false. Some of it's inaccurate, some of it is one-sided and generally misleading, especially about uh, aquaculture, salmon farming, farmed salmon and fisheries and aquaculture issues in general. So um, all along, uh, my daughter and one of his granddaughters have been classmates. Oh really? And Isn't that a small yeah. world? I guess that's Vancouver for you. Yeah, that's right. So as it turned out, um, on the night of their high school graduation ceremonies, we ended up in the same little cafe, Cafe Crepe on, uh, on Granville Street. And I was there with a bunch of girls who were just having a, something to drink before the ceremonies and he was all by himself at a little table, I guess waiting for his wife to come along. So I somehow had the uh, temerity to go up and introduce myself. We've actually met before, but I just thought, you know, I said, you know, Dr. Suzuki, I, you know, I'm Vivian, I've been writing letters to you for several years now, I just wanted you to have a, a face to go along with my name and introduce myself. And he looked at me and he said, you're the fish farmer. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, you know, yeah, I worked in fish farming, but that was seven years ago. And, um, and, and he, he just looked at me and he started telling me to F off. And by F, and you don't mean fish farmer, you mean F-U-C-K, off. Yeah. So this yeah. was, now, so I just want to check, I want you to be really candid with me. You were, mm -hmm. you were your normal, pleasant, friendly self, so you weren't picking a fight? Not at all. So you, no. this was in a public cafeteria. This was at a school event. So that, you know, and when you say girls, do you mean like children or, or do you mean like your girlfriends, like your age? Well, mates? just to get the facts straight, okay, it, it was at a Café Crepe. It was a public restaurant. It yeah. wasn't a high school cafeteria. Right. And, and we were both there because we were with our families right. who were about to go to the ceremony. So this now, was a family, a family place and this was a family spirit. Like this wasn't a hardcore political thing. You went over because the fellow, David Suzuki, was sitting by himself. You said, hi, I'm Vivian Cross. And I believe you because I met you in person. I find mm -hmm. you very friendly. And I, I can't even imagine a harsh word crossing your lips. But, and, and you say that just based on you introducing yourself, he told you to F off. Well, le le let me give you the whole story. Okay? He's a saint. And by the way, it's it's been written up in it's been written up on a popular Vancouver blog called City Caucus. There was an article written called Temper Temper. Yeah. So what ha what happened is is uh, I introduced myself, but he didn't place my name right away. Oh uh, yeah. And I said Vivian Vivian Cross. Then I said I have a oh. And by the way, when I introduced myself, at first he was delighted to speak with me. He stood up. He shook my hand. He was very friendly. And then he said my blog is you know fair questions and. I I'm, I'm writing to you about my concerns about the information there. And that, when it clicked about who it was, uh. who I was, that's when he looked me straight in the eye and just started telling me to F off. And then he caught himself, or so it seemed, and he sat down. Huh, because this whole and thing was incredible. Listen, I want to tell you, Vivian, that's a crazy story. And it's, it, to me, it sort of shows the two sides of David Suzuki. One, when he thinks, oh, I'm, you know, I'm on camera. This is a new per I want to be the happy, huggy David Suzuki. But when it's someone who disagrees with you, I totally believe that he told you to F off. You know what? He gave my book, Ethical Oil, a one-word book review. He called it B-U-L-L-S-H-I-T. He just, that was his bull. S H I T. That, I mean, that's the that is uh, that is how he uh, responds to critics. He doesn't get down and debate facts. I want to read to you. But Ezra, Vivian, yeah, go ahead. 
let's get to the important issue here. It's not the little hissy fit that David Suzuki had with me, nor which he has had apparently with, with other people. The issue is accountability. Exactly. And Dr. Suzuki is very influential in our country. His foundation has had more than $80 million in revenues over the last and 10 years. And it has over a dozen registered lobbyists. They, they love holding other people to account, but by God, you criticize him and he starts F off this and BS that. Well, you know what? We aren't responsible for his behavior. We are all responsible for our own. What would be nice is if David Suzuki would set a good example, especially for the youth in our country. And I think it's not, the issue isn't whether we agree or disagree, right? We should, we should have the maturity to be able to debate the issues. You know, and it, that's, yeah. You're so that's right. the thing that's so important, is that one of the things that our country is known for around the world is our tolerance. Yeah. And tolerance is so important. You know, we, we need to be able to, to discuss things with people who we disagree about. My disappointment with Dr. Suzuki is that he seems to think he's maybe above question oh. or he doesn't need to respond. You know, I've written, I think it's 14 letters. They're very detailed. Some of them are, you know, 20 pages long. They have footnotes. I've tried to write them as academically and as respectfully as I can because Regardless of these little incidents that seem to be reported once in a while, he is very influential, and oh, I think yeah. in many ways he was ahead of his time. Yeah. You know, he was, he really was. So he, I think he has an important voice, but I do think that he, he owes some answers on some of the issues where the information that he's provided is flagrantly untrue. Vivian, that's incredible. I just want to read in the closing moments, I want to read to mm. you from a letter to the editor that ran in the Moncton times and transcript about this sort of thing. I'm just going to read and some of it's on the screen right now. I went to see David Suzuki speak in Moncton. I was hoping to ask him during the question period for advice on a, how to help me promote environmentalism. Mm -hmm. When I approached him he looked up and said, book? I said I didn't have one. He said, I don't have time and waved me away like a mm -hmm. king dismissing a commoner asking yeah, for well, help with, know, and, and basically just, he was saying if you're not buying a book I don't have any time for you. I, I think that maybe he's gotten a little too big for his britches. Well, it's one incident, and you know, maybe it wasn't his finest moment. But on a more broader um, issue, you know, I, I wrote to him about 26 web pages that I feel contain inaccurate and, and one-sided, in some instances, false information. The David Suzuki Foundation simply quietly removed yeah. those web pages, which are the basis for one of the longest-running environmental controversies in British Columbia, Vivian, in fact in our country. I want to have you on again. You're one of our favorite fan favorites <laughs> on the show. Thank you for bringing, and that crazy story about the cafe in Vancouver. What a head scratcher. Thanks for joining us here. 